Hey guys, Brian here with the Forest Farm Project. Today at Terry's Old House, Terry's going to show you how we install single pole and three-way switches, as well as how we orient the wires in the boxes. Hope you guys enjoy it. On our old house, we generally try and measure up whatever the existing height is on boxes. Here we've got this receptacle close. It's right next to the countertop. So we're going to mount this box the same height as that receptacle box. It'll just look better. Fortunately for us, on this one, we already had a box on the other side of the wall in the garage. And we were able to reach in there and see where our clearance was. We measured from the door frame over. And then we did the same thing over here. So we should be good and clear. Alright, all right, we got Brian on the other side of the wall. He's going to feed these wires to me. We've got that switch out in the garage that was also a remodel box like we're installing here. So we pulled it out of the wall, made easy access. So you say this is power here? That is a fan. Oh, that's a fan? Yep. See if I can get it in here. Okay, that'll be our new ceiling fan. Now, what do we got there? Power? Yep. Okay. Another power. Right here. Pretty long. And I got a three-way coming to you. Now when this house was wired, they had 14-3 run on a circuit that also had 20 amp wires and it was running 20 amp. And you were allowed to do that back then, but now you're not. So if it's existing in the house, they can't make you change it as long as you're not doing anything to it. But we're going to go ahead and change this since we have access to it. So this is a 12-3. It's yellow. They didn't used to color code the wire. It used to be all white, the 12 and the 14 both. So this is, this is all 12 here, even though you would think by looking at it from that camera that it's uh, 14 because it's white. It was actually 12 back then. And this is 12. Now 12-2 or 3 is yellow and 14 is white. Well, we got the power off and we still got plenty of light. That Milwaukee rocket light deal we've got is awesome. <laughs> we use that thing pretty much every day, don't we, Ryan? Yeah. Somewhere or another. All right, we're going to put all these wires in this box and hook them up. I don't have a clue what we're going to do with them. We'll just start connecting them until we see what happens. Kidding. A lot of people do that, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. They must from what we see out there. All right, we're going to put this yellow wire as a 12-3. It's going to go in the bottom of the box because it goes down. These other three wires go up. Two powers and a fan. And the garage light wire is going to be over to the left. There's no real rule there. It's just what we decided to do. So I'll put the fan over here to the right as far as I can. Get these two power wires in here. They can be a little tricky sometimes but you just keep working with them it'll happen get this other power wire in there I generally put the power wires if there's just two in the same hole that way it keeps easier to keep straight with what's what there's three wires just laying in the garage this yellow one so I'm gonna pull what I need and then the rest will just let go back down the wall the white ones, however, go up in the attic, so we're going to pull the excess out, just get it out of the wall. No need to leave it in there. Get my battery drill in here. I'm going to cut all this excess off. I don't need it. I know what's what here. Two power wires. OK, 
got to be careful you don't cut them wires on the inside. It's a little bit tricky doing this. I've seen some people do try to do like I just did and slide down that wire and when they get done, they strip the insulation right off the wire. So you really got to be careful. Okay, first off, I'd like to say watching this doesn't make you an electrician. This is one instance. There's so many ways things can be wired, especially in an old house. We're going to show you how to hook this three-way up, the modern conventional way of doing it. There's multiple ways that it could be done and this is the most correct way by code. And that is, first off, I've bent all my wires up. But again, don't think you're an electrician just because you learned how to do this. <laughs> because I don't want people to think that they can be an electrician by watching a video. You need to really do some studying and, and look these things up and, and understand them before you go trying to be an electrician. You know, a person can probably put a switch in and whatnot. You gotta know your limitations, so everybody's gotta know their limitations. But anyway, I pull, push all my wires out of the way, pull my grounds down first, and I twist them together all the way. It's got a good ground contact all the way up through there because more than likely you're never going to pull this apart. Not saying you won't because we did it to get this in here, but that's only if somebody's doing some remodeling or something like that, fixing something, whatever, adding something. Put a wire nut on there that's appropriate for the number of wires and size of wire. These remodel boxes are a little bit tight, kind of stiff wire too, so I like to get that back in there out of the way so that my switch will fit in there nicely. All right, so all the grounds hooked together. In this instance, this is our three wire cable. We're sending ground down to that switch and we're also using that white wire for a neutral. There's many times in this instance, this white wire could be your hot, especially in older houses. They did it all the time. Um, modern times, if you were going to use that, you take a black or a red or some color marker and you color that wire if you had to use that. And there are instances you would. I'm not going to get into it here. So you might come across one that's been colored. You can say, ah, oh, that's probably hot. But I've went in many a house and found the white wires to be hot wires, which is a big no-no now. Should have been a no-no then, but people did it. People did whatever it took. So all these are neutral wires here, all the white wires. And this is about seven inches long, I believe. And uh, you're supposed to have six inches from the back of the box out. We always give a little bit extra. I'm stripping about, I'd say a half, five eight, somewhere in there of wire. The better you get at twisting the wires, the less you need to strip. If you can't seem to get them to twist together, you might want to leave extra wire and then strip them an inch long or so and it's easier to get them started together. We'll line them up kind of in a cross pattern. Take your, well, we found these Milwaukee's to be the best lineman pliers we've ever used. But you grab them wires and twist them together. And the reason we do that, even without a wire nut, that's a good connection. I wouldn't leave it that way, but even without a wire nut, that is a good connection. Put that wire nut on there, you're locking it down, it's not going anywhere. I've went to many a house, things didn't work, some things didn't work for 20 years, and I go in there and I pull on the wire nut, and I grab a wire and pull it right out. It was never connected, it pushed out because they didn't twist them. They just stuck a bunch of wires together, threw a wire nut up, up there, and the edge of that wire nut inside would grab and push one wire right out of the way, and then it doesn't work. <clears throat> so that can be a problem you can have if you don't twist them together. There we go. Now, this one over here is the fan switch. It's gonna go over here. So I got to have a switch. I got, this is the power coming in. I need power going to that switch and I need power going to the three-way for the garage. So I'm going to grab two pieces of wire off of this scrap stuff we just cut off. Twist them together, get them crisscrossed like the others. And you want to kind of pull and twist. You don't want to just ball them up. You want them to be elongated and twisted so that the wire and other go on and compress them down and 
they stay hooked together. And actually, when I twisted those, the ends are not quite even. So I would come back and trim that up, try and get the ends as close to even as possible. It might be a 30 second off or something, not a big deal. Put that wire nut on good and tight, get good quality. These 3M wire nuts work great. Nobody's paying us to say any of this stuff. I'm telling you what, 30 years of experience have taught me works. <clears throat> so, this will be our single pole switch to the fan. Again, we had the power off earlier. We made sure of that before we started this. Sometimes I end up with these a little bit short when I do a jumper from the powers, but it doesn't matter because I can replace that at any time. It's already wire netted right there. I'm bending loops in these wires to put on the screws. I generally just bend it and pull out as I'm twisting. So you're, you hook it over the wire and then you twist but you, once it grabs that wire, the edges of this hole here grab that wire about the time you, before you even bend it, it grabs it. And at that point, you can start pulling out and it won't come off. See how I'm pulling? And then you pull and twist. And that gives you a nice curve. You can come back up here, throw your switch on. I'm um, pretty familiar. I can run the screw in and then wires will go right where they need to. First off, which direction does this screw turn? It's going to screw in a clockwise motion to tighten up. So you want that wire such that it comes around and over in that clockwise direction. And that will tend to pull that, that wire down and tighten it up with the screw. If you put it on backwards like this, when you tighten it, it pushes that wire out and it opens it up instead of pulling it in. You don't want that to happen because I've seen switches where they put them on backwards and take the switch out and the wire just fall off of it. So that's not a good situation. I like to take this, if, if, you, if you're not confident with getting this thing tightened down good, you want them wires to stay on there, you can grab the wire and loop it around there. That gives it a much better grip. And Now a lot of switch covers, you need to pull these tabs off and the switch will go between where this uh, tab here on the wall is, it goes between there. This, this part right here breaks off. The type of covers we use are a, a mid-size cover and they have a little space and this is actually able to stay on there, which gives you a little more strength against that wall, more metal touching that wall, besides just the plastic. So if you're pushing on it, it doesn't hurt. It's so, not a big deal on switches so much, but when you come to receptacles, that makes a big difference. Gives you a little more strength there. There's our fan switch. When you're working with a three-way, you have what you call two travelers, and then you either have a, the power, or this could be the switch leg if you're at the other end of the uh, circuit, but you generally call this the odd wire. Two travelers carry power from one end to the other. When this switch, it's got a black screw, now on this particular switch, it's a black screw, and these are two kind of brass screws. The black screw is where you want the odd wire, the two travelers, the two wires that go from this switch box to the other switch box <clears throat> need to be on the uh, similar colored screws. And what happens is when this switch is in one position, the power is coming in here or it's going out to the light from this switch. Either way, when the switch is in one position, this and this are connected and that has no contact. Then when you flip it the other way, this and this are connected and that has no contact. This is always connected to either this or this. These two travelers carry the power either on this one or that one. If I got this switch in this position and it's going this way and through the other one out to the light, when I flip the other one the other direction, then it breaks that connection. So then the other wire is hot and the only way to get it to work out there or in here again is to flip it back the other way because the other wire is hot. So it switches it back and forth. Um, I'll get into some details on this. When we build our houses, we're going to do a more extensive explanation on electrical. Still, this does not mean you're an electrician. This just helps you better understand electricity. Especially if you're trying to become an electrician, this could really help. I'll try and share whatever I can think of. I've had a lot of crazy experiences over the years, and I'm sure some of that will come up. <clears throat> so.
So, again, I got my odd wire on the odd screw, and my traveler wire on a similar screw, and flip it around, put the other traveler wire on there. You'll notice there's a ground screw here. In our area of South Carolina, you are not required to have a ground on there. Receptacles, I wouldn't put in without a ground. Switches, I don't put the ground because I'm not required. And when you do, because these screws are so uh, accessible and so close, you've got a bare ground floating around in there. And sometimes you'll have four switches in one box. I can't tell you how many houses I've went to and that ground wire has hit one of these screws and shot sparks out the switch cover and people are all scared their house is going to burn down. So it just works out better, in my opinion, if you don't have to use them. If they require to use this ground, they should come up with an insulated ground so that if it touched, it wouldn't be a problem because it wouldn't short out if the insulation's touching the screw. <clears throat> but that's not my call. I don't make the rules, I just live by them. Get them wires in that box the best you can. Try and keep your switch straight on the way in. That way it'll be straight when you mount it. If you don't, you're gonna have problems when you try to mount it if you just cram them in there. Well, we hope this helps some of you guys out if you go to change out switches in your own houses. Check back soon. We're going to be getting rid of the fluorescent and put in some nice ceiling lighting and really get close to finishing this bad boy out. Have a good one.